Hey guys, before we get into the main video today, I just want to say, yeah, this one did run long, but it's also pretty comprehensive because this isn't just an overview of me talking about a game. It's also me giving a full guide to everything you need to know about how to get into this game, how to start this game, how to play this game, how to enjoy this game. So as per usual, all the timestamps that you need will be down below if you want some specific information. Otherwise, just kick back, enjoy the video. And also, if you want to watch me play this live and games like this live, follow me at twitch.tv forward slash looting. The link is down below in the notes. Please check it out. Drop me a follow. Okay, let's get into the video. Hi, right, hello guys, welcome back for another video, and today, looking at Planet Coaster. Now, some of you will be thinking, well, hang on, Planet Coaster, that game came out like two years ago. Yep, it did. In fact, it's actually exactly two years ago that this game came out. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to look back at it, because despite the game having been out for two years, this is still currently one of my favorite games to play. Now, Whilst the channel mainly focuses on FPS, military stuff, obviously we have the lore, uh, Battlefield, we've done armor in the past, all these things, I would very much like to periodically, not all the time, throw in like a video which is where I look at maybe like an indie game or a game which I feel is very noteworthy, something that I think is important that you know potentially you might have missed by or that maybe it's something that you were never really interested in but you know at a second look and if you actually have a look at the explanation about the game and what it can offer you might be something that you might want to check out and try something new now why is planet coaster one of my favorite games because quite simply it's something pretty rare it's it's a genre which is not heavily explored in terms of theme park simulation okay we've obviously got classics like roller coaster tycoon 3 and going back further than that you have something like theme park but really, Planet Coaster is a game which has taken all of those and pushed it way, way beyond that in terms of its mechanics, its visual style, and essentially just everything that it offers. And with the game celebrating its two-year anniversary, they're actually announcing something that's going to be implemented on the 20th of November, which is called the Theme Maker's Toolkit. Now, up until this point, the game, you've been able to create kind of basically asset builds, pre-compositions that you could put onto Steam. But now with the Theme Maker's Toolkit, what they're going to be allowing people to do is actually build their own designs. And it has to be done in something like Maya, Blender, 3D Studio. So basically any kind of like... 3D design program but then you're going to be able to actually put those small bespoke items perhaps scenery elements and people are going to be able to create these and put them into the game and the fact that they're allowing people to do this is really really phenomenal obviously there are many games which allow extensive modding and creation of new elements for the game but for a game like Planet Coaster which has been basically entirely in-house for this time the, the last two years for them to then allow people to start pushing their own elements into the game is a really cool thing to see them do. There is reasons why I think they didn't allow the game to be sort of heavily modded from the word go, uh, unlike, say, City Skylines. And then you can have a discussion about whether that's a positive thing or a negative thing. But basically, the studio wanted to retain control of its look and I guess the content going in there. Now they're allowing people to kind of go beyond and put their own things into the game. That's really cool. But really what I want to do is show you the game, show you what is great about this game, and maybe also throw in a few little tips and tutorials as well to give you a better understanding of what the game is all about. Now, often on my live stream, I will play games like Planet Coaster, City Skylines, building management games, Prison Architect, RimWorld, all these kind of things, because I really enjoy building and management games. They're something that I have a real uh, love of for the longest time. But Planet Coaster is, one, just a beautiful game. Two, it's a very, very intuitive game. And three, the mechanics that it has in terms of placement of scenery, building of rides, building of an atmosphere are really second to none. And just before you think, oh, Luton, you're being a little bit, a little bit gushing about this game and kind of loving all over this game. It's like, yeah, it's true. I do really enjoy this game. I recognize what it is that it's a very, very strong icon in the sort of theme park building game genre, if not the greatest one that's been made. And people are going to debate about that and say, well, you know, Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 had like the splashed out water park thing. And yeah, you know, this is why I come in with some pretty severe criticisms of this game as well. Um, in fact, there's a large selection of the community uh, for Planet Coaster who feel like, the developers really focus too heavily on aesthetics and not enough on the kind of management side of things and ensuring that those mechanics work properly. And I would actually agree. I think that for myself, the thing that I enjoy the most is management of the park, making sure you're making money, making sure that the rides are making money, making sure that the staff behave in a kind of reasonable fashion, that they aren't just doing weird stuff or just abandoning their positions. Or, you know, when the game first came out, uh, staff would just kind of quit. They, you could barely keep your staff employed. And that's something that they've had to tweak and fix over time. But they have tweaked and fixed these things over time. 
Another thing that people have pushed for heavily has been, as you saw in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, having kind of like a splashed out water park DLC, like a big DLC. This game has never had that, and it doesn't seem like it's likely that that will ever happen. Neither are they likely to do anything, it appears, to do with like a kind of zoo DLC or safari park DLC. These are the kind of things that are very traditional um, and very kind of established in the sort of theme park building style of game. And I have to say, it's quite severely disappointing that that isn't happening. And it's also a little bit uh, hard to understand why that isn't happening as well, um, especially with the water park uh, DLC and things like this, because they would be big sellers. I, I can't really understand why it is they've decided not to do that. But the developers and the community managers have pretty much made it very clear that that isn't going to happen. Uh, I've asked repeatedly over the last two years, and it's, it's very clear that that isn't going to happen. But nonetheless, it doesn't take away from the fact that the game is still excellent in its current state and provides a huge amount of um, different kind of experiences and loads of flexibility in terms of creativity for you to be able to build a park that you want in different styles, different themes, be as creative as you want. So there is a lot you can do there, but it's a little bit sad because, you know, it'd be great to be able to play those things. So what is it about these games which makes me want to play, want to enjoy them so much? Well, the main thing is it's just very relaxing. You know, I do a lot of the sort of main full on FPS games and it's very relaxing to be able to come into a game like this where you can kind of just kick back, forget about things and just enjoy building and placement of items and just kind of really chill out. That's what this game is. It's kind of like a really nice chilling out game and it gives you loads of things that you can do in order to kind of just be creative and make everything how you want it to be. I've always really enjoyed that with games, the ability to just kind of make and imagine and build stuff ever since I was a kid. And this is a kind of game which really enables you to be able to do that. But what I want to show for you is kind of like how you move objects around in the game, how the, some of the management stuff works in the game, how you can build rides in the game. But first of all, I really want to kind of showcase for you the parks and just kind of give you an overview about what you can actually do and achieve with this game and to be clear as well this isn't like a primary game for me so i don't have any extremely finessed big finished parks this is a chill out game for me this is a game which i'm just going to like play as and when i can or when i'm doing a live stream just enjoy you know so i'm not trying to seek to build like some architecturally perfect super kind of ocd game you know and it's actually with, with this game very much like city skylines it's quite difficult sometimes to not be really OCD about alignment of some, you know, pieces of scenery, different objects, etc, etc. And you can see this ride right here that's uh, going around right now. One thing that they've done so well in this game is, again, the kind of simulation of certain styles of rides. And this is a ride which I built very recently, um, and it's worked out great. You know, you can see right here, going through the canyon down below. It has a real nice smooth flow to it, this ride, and I, I really heavily enjoy. Now, I would love to go and do like a, a an overview of every single ride that I have going in my park, but if you want that, I would suggest probably the best thing to do is just come to my live streams at twitch.tv forward slash Luton, because I'm just not going to have time in one video to go over every single ride. But I will give you an example in a minute of one of my favorite rides, which is this one up here that you can see is just about to drop the really, really big coaster up here. This was a, a coaster that I built uh, a little while ago, probably six months ago, and it's ended up being one of my absolute favorites. Um, it's relatively extreme, as you can see right there, and uh, it gives the, uh, gives the peeps a good little ride for their money. It's quite a big ride, as you can see, comparative to the others. But one thing with this game, you, you do have the ability to sort of disable basically the statistical analysis of the rides, which will determine whether they're too scary or whether the G-forces are too strong for people in the park. You can disable that if you want to so that your, your people will go on any ride that you build. But I like to keep it on. It can be frustrating when you're trying to get a ride going on to have those stats basically limit the ability for you to build your ride however you want to. But at the same time, having your people go in at like 11 Gs is never really going to be the best thing for the people in your park. So probably one of the best things that we can do is just overview the park, just fly through the park, discuss the different elements as we go around it. So you can see right here, this is a food court. So people can come and get food and drink and what have you. Uh, we've got a noodle bar. There's uh, ice cream, cosmic cow, gulpy sodas, and a rib stall. There's also some vending machines right here, coffee and uh, pip shot juices. These basically enable your patrons of the park to be able to get um, different drinks without having to have actual staff there to deal with them. Um, you can see right here is an ATM machine. Uh, the ATM allows people in the park to get extra money so they can go on the rides. And then there's other things here like little signs and advertisements. Now an interesting thing is that signs like this, the name of the rides, like Eye of the Storm, whatever, those signs will actually, you, you can sync those with a ride. So you can click on that, you can sync it with that. So basically if I was to click on this ride right now, 
Okay, you can see right here up at the top right, it says advertise destination. So if I set advertise destination, I can set this ride so that when people look at the sign, they understand this is the direction they need to go. And it's a way of basically pulling people in the park further into your rides, which works really well. And you can do that with all signs in the park. Got the restrooms there for people coming in and out of the park. And again, you need to distribute those in and around the whole park in order to make people happy so that they're not kind of like dying of uh, bladders wanting to explode as they walk around the park. This ride I just put in the other day and I need to kind of finish this frontal area. I had this idea of having like a nice garden or something in front of this ride. But this is a very kind of like vintage style ride. And basically all of these trees, all of these elements, everything that you see has been placed by myself. So you can basically customize another big big coaster going on here, look. This was a really enjoyable one to build this ride. Here they come. But everything that you see, yes, has been placed uh, by myself over time throughout the build. Um, I'll give you an example of what I mean. So take this tree, for example. Okay, now you can take that tree, and I can either move this around by pressing M, and then it enables me to move it however I want to. If I hold Shift, I can raise the tree up or down into the ground as much as I want. And this is one of the great things with the uh, design system in the game, is that you can basically intersect objects with anything that you want. Okay, so you can just move them around. It'll come to daytime in a minute. We can see a little bit better. But another thing you can do is you can press X, and X then puts you onto the XY axis. So then you can move the object in different directions. You press X again, and it's going to give you a rotational axis. So you can rotate these things however you want to. So you give a real idea of how things can be customized in a really, really detailed way. A lot of people can take different masks as well, and you can see these guys, Statue of Liberty masks, skull masks. And this again, this was a ride that I designed here. So the, these rides are basically singular objects, so they just get placed into the map. And then you can design the scenery all around it. And so I had this idea with this ride that it was kind of like a broken industrial site. So that's why we've got the rubble, the iron girders, the big steam tanks all around this. Because it kind of matches and goes very well with this ride, basically. So as we stop here at the entrance to one of the rides, this is the Deadfall ride, which is the one up here that we saw earlier. You can see some little effects coming through. This is some little steam and smoke. There's some leaves drifting around, some dust drifting around. And this is one of the things that you can add into the game right here, is stuff like these little smoke effects. And where that's coming from is this little thing right here. And basically, if I move this, you'll see. This is basically a little smoke effect. All that does is it kicks smoke out. And with those, you can customize those quite a lot. So you can change the color of the smoke. There's all sorts of different... See, there's the smoke. You can change the color to whatever you want to. There's a lot of customization with many, many of these features in the game. And this ride itself actually ends up coming... where well, you end up going through this kind of weird stone creature, which is, like, coming up out of the ground. So when the ride goes down, it goes down through... The mouth of that creature out the other side. Now all of this has been done with the terrain deformation tools in the game and I've also placed a load of static rocks in and around the object itself but again you've also lit this at night time so it's a bit more interesting so if I just switch the uh, lighting to night time you can see we've put loads of lighting in and around this ride so that gives it a little bit more atmosphere and tried to kind of like theme the colors with the ride as well so that when you see the guys going around over here as they go through the canyon and in and around the ride it's just kind of more thematic for uh, what we want going on so next up let's take a ride okay this ride here is called the layer this is the big one we were looking at so we'll take the opportunity here to ride on this one okay this this one's just going up here and I'll be quiet and let you guys just enjoy the ride here.
<laughs> okay, so that's the ride. So you can design these rides however you want to, and I'll show you shortly just about how we're going to do that. But again, with the uh, queues here, you can theme and style your queues however you want to, to be like this, have like weird little spooky creatures. So this idea again, like the layer, this ride. So you can kind of just theme these things however you want to, make them spooky, make them fun, make them however you want to be. Okay, as we come over here, you see this is another uh, food stand. This is basically another food court where people can order food. So again, they've got burgers, they've got uh, gobby milkshakes, uh, juice, and then pizza. So again, people can order all the food there. You know, some picnic benches, which was a big addition for the game a while back, and uh, so people can stop to eat their food here as well. Who are these guys? Oh, that's really weird. I had never seen this before. I think these guys are like, they, they've come like in fancy dress? I don't know. I didn't know this was a thing with the game. This is something I literally had never seen before. This is weird. Look, they're all dressed in like black with like police outfits. And then there's a guy with them who's in an orange jumpsuit, almost like a criminal. Is that like a thing? Is that people coming to the park dressed in... <laughs> I've never ever seen that ever in the park. That's really confusing. Anyway, okay. That's a, that's a whole new thing for me just today. I've never ever seen this. Okay. So you get classic rides as well. So this is sort of like a more vintage style ride as well as the older rides that you get. So with any ride, there's always like a period where basically people have to kind of load in to get in onto the ride. So you can see right here, they have a certain or a maximum amount of time where people can actually go to get in onto the ride. Once that maximum time has been reached, the ride's gonna lock them in and there is a controller on each ride right here. We'll start these rides going. Now there's been various DLCs since the game has started, so some of the rides are going to be like this one, a bit more vintage. And then you're going to have much more modern thrill rides as well, which have got all of that stuff going on. But some of these kind of, it's a real nice juxtaposition between these older ones and the newer ones. And depending on the sequence that you have set up, you're going to be able to charge more or less per ride, basically. Whenever I'm doing rides, I always think it's cool to have like kind of the exit queue from the ride come through so that people can kind of see the ride going around as they're exiting. And um, you can see here we've got some pretty cool lava effects going on. So this was from one of the um, adventure packs, I believe, and you had like these kind of lava templates that you can put down. But again, just to destroy your immersion. These are basically very simple like textural templates like this, like that you can just lay in. And then the lava here is again, those same kind of modules that you saw earlier on. And you can just place those special effects modules in and they'll create these lava effects. So there's all sorts of different things that you can do in the park in and around your rides to theme them and make them more interesting. I'll show you this in my another park after. Whenever people enter into your park, they're going to come through the main gates. And you can see my main gates right here. Planet Coaster, this is a little building that I've built. Uh, as you come through, you come into like a central courtyard where you have the big King Coaster. And then you can see there's a huge avenue walkway which goes straight down. These main avenue walkways, you're going to want to make them as big as possible so that they can accommodate the large amount of guests. I think my park currently brings in between four to 5,000 guests every day. So there's a lot of people kind of going in and around the park. And you can see you need to accommodate the space for that because otherwise it's going to get extremely, extremely congested. And then it's going to be very difficult for people to move around. They won't be very happy. They won't spend so much money and you won't make so much money. Uh, you can see one of the entertainers over here as well. Cosmic Cow. So you have little entertainers in and around your park, and this can be like the King Coaster guy. They're basically mascots for some of the stores and also the park itself. And the kids love them, and they'll sort of be very entertaining, etc. And you can set up entertainment points around your park like this, where your entertainer guys will come and they'll basically do like a little bit of entertainment. People gather around. But also, when they're in and around the park like this and they're just having their antics, people will, you can see like these people here. They'll kind of gather around and watch the entertainers. It's just a good way of kind of raising your um, your people's happiness in the park as well. Here's another classic ride as well. You get different rides, some which are obviously um, more fear-inducing or thrill-inducing that are more suitable for adults, teenagers. And then you'll get rides like this, the kind of classic carousel, which is more suitable for families and children. Obviously the game also has a day-night cycle, which is excellent because it enables you to put all sorts of interesting lighting effects in and around your rides in your park. It works really nicely to just bring more atmosphere to the park, like these kind of like vintage lighting arches or some of these lettering which you can have here. Like for example, my gumball machine has got like the, obviously the letters there with it. 
Um, and again, so we have those thrill rides, we have these roller coaster rides, but then you also get these kind of more tracked rides. You can see they're kind of built like a nice garden here. But this one here is your classic kind of rolling river water ride. So you get these water rides. These rides are always immensely popular in the park, almost universally. You put a water ride in and people absolutely love the hell out of it. And uh, I won't ride on this ride, but we'll just take a little tour around, you can see. And again, I've, I've, I've put these lights in and around my ride. These were not here by default. And you can design and build these rides however you want them to be. You can see they go flying down here into the darkness. And then as they get through to this section, of course, then we've got a bit more waterfall going on. I mean, classic games like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, these actually used to be pre-built set pieces. So this, this right here constitutes a bit of a rapid section, so it's a bit more rough for the uh, ride. But these waterfalls, I had to place those in myself. They're not part of the ride. And then for this ride, finally, they go up through here, give people a proper soaking just if they weren't wet enough already. And then your ride just carries on back to the start. The other thing is, whilst you can have these kind of tamer rides, these family rides, these thrill rides, you can also have fairly extreme roller coasters like this one right here. This is a favourite one that I built fairly recently. Try and find a car that's nearer the start. Here we go. This one starts off by sending you into a little drop, and then we've got a climb right here. We'll just fly up to the top. And this ride actually was a pain to build. It took me quite some time to get all the balancing right for it. Make it so that it was an extreme ride. But not so extreme that people wouldn't even ride. This is this is at default speed, by the way. This is not sped up. And you come to a nice little break period. This, some of these rides can take quite some time to build because in order to get them actually functional and have people want to ride on them, they've got to be balanced so they're not so terrifying people won't even go on them to start with. There you go, there's the ride. It's nice when you have like several rides together and you can kind of see other elements go on. A lot of this area here is not finished, like I really need to kind of spend more time in detailing this area. Because for example, this is like the main kind of like station for it, and that's not really finished. I need to kind of put like a whole central top onto this. And I think this area here is a bit barren, like it would be good to get some rocks and stuff in. And again, I've, I've got over here like some other, other thrill rides, other kind of space themed thrill rides, which are popular enough, but um, again, like the, the area could do a little bit more finessing really. So that's basically a decent overview of the park. There is another great ride here, which is, of course, the Log Flume Ride. It's another one which is endlessly popular. I was actually very happy with this one because uh, we ended up sort of building a fantastic station for this all the way through here. You can see a really kind of customized station. Um, and then putting all these trees and so on, it really fits very well into the park here. I think it's really nice. It kind of sits right within the park. And um, that was my whole overall sort of style and idea with this park was it was going to be like a bit vintage, a bit modern, but it was also going to be like a nice garden sort of style theme park with lots of trees and so on and so on. And it's worked out quite well. I think it kind of blends together really nicely. So before we go on, let's take a look at building and designing some different elements for the park in terms of scenery and things like this. And it's actually incredibly, incredibly easy to build scenery and buildings and different things like this in the game. So what you will have is at the bottom here, you have blueprints, coasters, rides, shops, facilities, scenery. Okay, and then of course a building tab as well. And the building tab tends to be for specifically building, obviously, buildings. Now what we might search for here is something like wood. Because there's a lot of objects in this at this point in time. So let's take, we'll, we'll just build a very, very standard default kind of shop storefront for you to just have an example. So you start off with a wall and you can see straight away this is going to be on a grid. Right, so once you've placed that first piece, it's going to put you on a grid. Okay, now one thing to notice is, look at this. You see how this is built on the edge here, okay, on the edge of these lines, okay. 
So basically, you can see, look, within this square, this piece, you see how that's intersecting with that, and it's actually building it on it, but this is on, like, a whole other grid square. Yeah? So when you're building these, you want to ensure that they actually are connecting together so that when you come to build your other pieces, like a rooftop or whatever, you want to make sure it's going on that grid square and not on the grid square next to it. So we'll, we'll just do, like, a, a two front kind of shop front now you could have just kind of like a doorway arch or you could have so this would be like so that you could have an archway if you had like a pre-made build um actually i'll tell you what we'll do what we'll do is we'll just uh, i'm not going to save any of this but what i'll do is uh, i'll put like a, a first aid all right so what you might have is like a first aid shop right there okay and lay that in and then maybe i want to get some food or drink there as well or an information stand let's put an in information so it's kind of like a little service building area here okay so there, there is your information stand and you notice none of this is connected to the uh, pathways so nobody can access it right now that's not a problem we're still in the building mode so let's click back to building instead of shops so what we want is uh, a shop front for this part right here and again making sure that i'm intersecting that wall on the correct grid square space and then i'm going to choose a, a modern square archway to go around this one because this is obviously it needs to be open like that so that people can actually access it Again, you can theme and you can style these however you want to. Now, again, we could we could style this a bit more interesting look, but we could create like a little wooden column like this. And you could place those maybe not in the middle on the rear section, maybe we just have two on the rear section. Just to kind of make it look a little bit interesting. I'm going to do this very, very quickly. Um, and then we've got to decide what kind of roof we want to have. Okay, now we've got wooden roof selected, but I think a more traditional for the kind of generic park is going to work so something like these curves now with the roof you could either have it curved like this i mean you could you could do this a number of different ways you could either have it so that it's just a complete curved top like that or maybe you could be a bit interesting have it kind of like that like a wave or you could go for you know we could just go straight up straight down on both of them or you could even have one which is flat and the other one kind of just stick straight up and we could kind of like let's do this just to show i mean it, i don't think it looks particularly good but we'll just do it to show sort of mechanically i'll just put this just because i want to show the sort of finishing element um in terms of how this aligns now with this as well if you wanted to um you could move click m again move you could lay that but you can see it doesn't really work particularly well but maybe if we Okay, so now within the building here, what you have is the grid size and the grid height. So basically, if you watch the grid right here, if I adjust grid size, see how that becomes smaller, and it allows you to kind of build a little bit more specifically on the grid square. Now also with the rooftop here, if I click M to move, see how that's going right underneath that building, which is not really what I want, right? But if I was to adjust this grid height down to 0.25 meters, and then click on it, and then move it down, see how it enables me to just intersect it so it's just sitting above and the only trouble with this depending on how ocd you are is if you if you do these kind of intersectional things you can see right here see how that's sort of kind of glitching through right there and the same same here like you can see it's kind of glitching through again you could you could use something else to cover that up you could get some you know ivy or you could get another piece of wood or whatever if you wanted to do it specifically like that but for me we'll probably just leave it as it was okay but now we've still got to cover in this space on this side so how are we going to do that okay well if we go back to walls and we go back to our wooden walls so wood what we're going to need to do is find the right shapes to fit within this because this is all usually pre-worked out so with this one right here i turn this around so you can see that's going to fit into that space and i can just move it across the other side right here and it's still got a gap in here, okay. So we're just going to need to find the correct height. It's probably going to be this one, two meters. Let's turn that around. Drop it down. There we go. Again, it's a, it's not particularly, you know, it's just trying to look at the mechanics here more than anything else. It's not a beautiful building. And we can still go on further. Remember, this is the information booth. So maybe we're going to want to add some, you know, we can add some doors and windows here as well. So again, because this is a more generic style of building, we want to have that generic style of window or door or whatever. And these are wooden ones as well, which is not what we're after. And you can, there's loads of filters here in terms of how you want to filter stuff in terms of like content pack, uh, property, all sorts, you know, all different tags and things that you can if you want to search for your different items here. So 
I'm just going to choose for this building like the generic, generic windows. Now you can see how that's snapping on. But basically that's because we have position snap turned on there on the side. And if I turn that off, you can see you can place this here. So we could place, you know, as many as we wanted to. So you can have one, turn that position snap on, makes it real nice and easy to just lay different things in. Okay. But like I say, if we turn that off, then we can just align this however we want to. So maybe we just, and then once, once you've got it in here, like you can just press X and X immediately gives us the X, Y axis. We can drop that down to whatever position we want to. Now when we press build, see how we actually still have another. So it basically it duplicates that. And these are some slightly more advanced building things to be aware of. So you can put two together. Now the other thing is if I wanted to duplicate that again, how am I going to do that? Okay, so up here on the right you have control D duplicate. So if I do control D, it's going to give me another one. So I can just select any object anywhere click on that. So one of these columns, I click on the column, control D, and hey, I have another column. So it's already, again, a quick way of building off of what you've already placed. But what if I want to move it in that exact position so that I can align, say, multiple windows? Okay. Well, again, if I want to edit that, I'm just going to press X. So maybe we want these to be a little bit further apart. Okay. I'm going to approve that one. And I'm going to move this guy. Move this guy also in this direction a little bit like that done but like what if i wanted to duplicate that but keep these the same okay well if i duplicate that if i hit Control x that's going to duplicate that on that alignment so that now if i wanted to say do more windows all along the same point i can do that but better let's say we wanted to duplicate and make sure that it's exactly the same height and position on the other side of the building i can now just pull this across right here like this and now you can see that is in the exact same position and we can work out it's about there roughly and then I and then that's going to allow me to again duplicate another and again I'm not if, if you wanted to take the time to do it absolutely perfect you could obviously just duplicate that one and move it through on the other side but that's a good example of kind of how the x y and duplication system works it's really really helpful and the other thing here is door okay I want to have this door and I'm just going to lay that door on uh, let's put it on this side done Okay, so that's the door for the building. You might want to put like an aircon unit, other things. And then you can have like these, okay, wall signs. You can narrow down this because again, there's, there's quite a few of these by some of the little uh, shortcuts here. So you have like ride signs, miscellaneous signs, theme signs, shop signs. Okay, now what we're after is facility signs because we have an information booth. And remember, this is the first aid center. So for the first aid center, uh, we can have like a little first aid sign right there, perhaps. Or we have the bigger first aid sign, which is going to go there. We've still got position snap on, which I don't really want. So you can just put a little first aid right there. And again, maybe we have a little first aid sign right here. And I just might want to intersect that into that wall there so it's a bit cleaner. Drop it down a little bit so it's perfectly in that line. Okay, and then that's our little first aid. Oh, so you can see, look, it's not. This is where you get it. Not perfectly in the center there, is it? There we go. All right, that's our little thing. And the information booth, similarly. Now, we've got a quite a big space here, so I would suggest having a great big eye. Try and get that ishly in the center. Okay. Now, one thing you'll notice is that little metal bar, which is uh, syncing the two letters together. This is a little small off-topic sort of tip as well. So, right now, if I zoom way out, I don't know whether this is actually going to work the same. We'll soon find out. You can see I can zoom quite far back, and that eye still stays there. But another thing I discovered the other day, if this is the same, if I push that right in... Yeah, see, now that one's interesting. It's not doing it. If I just click done on this building, I'll try and show you what I was talking about. So, basically, here on the bathrooms, which, by the way, look like they need cleaning out... Um, this is an interesting thing. Yeah, let's see. They won't go in. So I click on these people right here. Where are the janitors? Janitors. Toilet block 33 is a state. It's a right mess. There's no way I'm going in toilet block. It's a good question. I should have enough janitors for this section, actually. I've never actually seen this occur. Well, this is a good example of... Prob this is, you know, good time as any to show problem solving. So you can bring up your main menu here. Just press number one. Uh, staff, and it'll show me what staff I have available, what janitors. You can see I've got plenty of staffs. This is this is under sector two that I have assigned. So you can see I've actually got right here. Uh, there's one, two, three, four janitors in sector two. In fact, this this guy right here. This guy's a janitor. 
What's he playing at? Clean toilets. I hope he's bloody going in there. Come on, my friend. He's taking his sweet time, look. Not carrying the what? What the hell? What? Get in there, my friend. He was going to go to the hotel. He's taking the easy way out. What's going on here? It's mental. What's he up to? This this guy's kind of got in a like a building loop. He's, he's he's getting a little bit closer each time. I don't know what was going on there with the janitor. It was almost like he he couldn't contend with it. He's come in here to contemplate the big issues in his lifetime. To be fair, from the state of it, uh, I'm not entirely sure I'd have wanted to go in there to clear that out either, so it's a classic public toilet situation. Anyway, the point that I was actually trying to make originally was that um, if you click on this building, right, we'll edit this building. I'll just try and show you what I was talking about. So you can see at a distance, right, we can see those, those men and women toilet block sign. But if I click on this little icon right here, and I move it in so that those little white bars that you see are not showing. And what I discovered, there, look, see? At distance, for some reason, they disappear. I don't know what the reason is. But uh, if I bring this out so that those little white bars are showing, it doesn't do that. Well, that's a curiosity. I don't know what that was. So I kind of immediately assumed that would be the same with the eye, but that was apparently not the case. I like how the staff member, she wasn't even doing anything, but she's already abandoned her post. Okay, so let's move this now. So you can see as soon as I as soon as I go to move this building, okay, when it comes near to a path, it automatically connects that. So you could have this set back from the park. I mean, there's an information area. This might be a good thing to have next to the toilet block, right? And you can see look, that by moving, I've accidentally raised it up above the ground. That's not a problem, though. As you can see, even if you have this raised above the ground for whatever reason, if you bring it near to a path, it will auto-generate steps or a ramp or anything you want to. That's quite good in terms of aligning it onto the ground, but we don't want that ready. So what we want is it to be at that height. So again, maybe we want this to be in line with my other building. So, you know, it's, it's a little ways back. So... If I wanted it to be that far back, I'm probably going to have to generate my own paths to that. I guess let's do that because uh, that way it'll be an interesting little thing. So I kind of want to align these buildings with this. So like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up against here so that I can make sure that it is perfectly in line or relatively perfectly in line. Okay, yeah, that's good enough. So I'll just move that a little bit away from the actual toilet block. Place that in. Okay, but then as I say, suddenly we don't have paths. So I'm going to click on the bottom right here at paths, choose the style of path that I want, which is this style of path. Click on here, click on, I'm going to actually turn off angle snap so that I can make sure that my path is nice and smooth. And then similarly here, another path in there. That's the way it goes. Now the only thing you're going to notice right here is notice how this is grass as you go into the med bay. There's a reason for that. The reason is, is I've put it too deep into the ground. So if I just pull this up a little tiny amount, like that, there we go. Unfortunately for me, I've lost my paths, so I need to relay those paths. Okay, there we go. So that is our information and medical center put in very, very easily. And that gives you a little tutorial about how to build objects, how to move things around, how to build your paths, etc, etc. It's fairly straightforward. There's other things you can learn about building paths in terms of how they go underground and stuff, but I don't want to show that today. It's a little bit too much. Okay, but what about other scenery? What about rocks and bushes and stuff? What if we wanted to put some rocks and bushes around here? Well, again, a very quick way of doing that is to just see what else you placed. Okay, so if I could click on any of these bushes over here, just click on this control D, which is going to duplicate that bush. Now, if I hold Z, it gives me a rotation. Shift is up and down. Z is rotate. So I can just rotate this bush here and get it near. And I can intersect that into the ground. Okay, and then we've got a bush. But if you wanted to lay in some new things, you go scenery. 
go nature and then nature we can select rocks we can select bushes trees wall climbers so wall climbers would be things like ivy you can see how this kind of like there's a great tool in the game called align to surface in the here in the bottom right if you check that on or off if i check that off you can see look when i place my uh, wall climbing thing near a building see how it just stays horizontal if i turn the line to surface on you can see how that then does what it says on the tin it will align to the surface that you're placing it onto so for example for my bathrooms right here or well maybe we want to get a little bit of ivy so i rotate that around and then add and what that actually does is it adds it to that building's build so it's not just kind of like randomly there and then we could get a little bit more okay and again then click done on that building and that, then that is added to that entire building so just a very nice kind of easy way of changing that aesthetic right Again, bushes. Come back to bushes. We want to sort of decorate in and around here. We take these little mini conifer bushes, maybe. Okay, so just uh, one of those there. Rotate it a little bit. Another one there. Again, maybe we want to sort of make sure it sort of looks a bit sort of stylistically correct for this area. Maybe we want to make like a little feature here just with these little bushes. And I always say with this game, one of the things is how quickly you can build stuff. You can take this plant here. And again, just recess that into the ground a little bit so that it looks a little bit more subtle, not quite so. It doesn't look like I've just slapped an object down onto the ground, you know. We can just again recess that under the ground a little. But again, it looks like a little bit more like a sort of naturally spreading plant. And these little leafy bushes are very nice as well. And again, you can kind of recess that into the ground so that it looks a little bit more subtle. Okay, and you can see just in like two minutes we've managed to create a little bit more of an interesting sort of scenario like that. And again, you can get some little flowers in there or uh, what else have we got going on? Yeah, these things right here. Now, these are quite cool. You can change the color of these any color you want to so that you can make them a little bit more like this or a little bit more like this. Let's go with that kind of interesting little sort of mint green color. And it just helps to... Uh, then once we've got this, it's actually quicker I find sometimes to just duplicate those. We can just go from one to the next to the next. And you're like, okay, but if I had time, you see, we'd go on further and further. I think the best thing to do as well would maybe to just put some rocks in here. So we click on rocks, and there's different kinds of rocks. Um, I always think this game could use more rocks. Uh, right now, there's a, I, I would say, relatively limited selection of rocks. But um, what we'll do is we'll just take a couple of these small rocks right here. And the thing with the rocks, again, is you can press X twice there, rotate that around. It enables you to get kind of different look style for the rocks in the garden right here. And again, like, you know, if you want to go on and on and on with this, you can build a whole kind of rockery. Make that one look a little bit different. Okay, and then maybe over here we'll have like a... Just sort of finish that edge off look. We'll have a bit of a bigger rock going to rotate that to the side okay so again you get the idea and, and you can push this a bit further i mean between these two areas right here see also between this we've got like a little bit of a gap right so what about this what about if we go to path extras okay um let's go to content pack let's go to vintage content pack so under the scenery tab for vintage, what we find down here is some Victorian fences. You can have them panelled or bare. If I take this panelled fence right here, this is going to be a nice way of dividing these two sections, right? Now again, there's a lot of different tools which will enable you to best position these. But what I want mainly is align to surface, position snap. Okay, so again, the reason I want position snap is that I'm just going to freehand place this in here, right? I'm just going to place that one there. And with the position snap, okay, if I was to have that turned off, then you see how this is just, you know, you could you could freehand align this, all right, put them together. But if I put position snap on, it's going to snap that together, which enables me to make sure that these have a consistent alignment all the way along. Now, here's an interesting one. So we have our path, or we have our fence, I should say, placed in along the path. You can see this is now hanging over the edge. You know, maybe we don't want that. Maybe we don't want that hanging over the edge. What are we going to do? At the very bottom right, you have a tool called multi-selection. What we're going to do is we're going to select that. Click the first one. Okay, now if I click the next one, oh, it just clicks that. So what you want to do is hold down control. 
select, 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 select. So you can now see all of those are highlighted. So then if I were to press X, which remember takes us to the XY axis grid, press X and now we can move all of these together. So now I can just basically align that with the very edge of my path there. So that's aligned in there. But you can see, look, depending on how OCD you want to be about this, is it perfectly in the middle there? Maybe not. So maybe I just want to nudge it over a small amount so it's right in the middle and then just go OK. And then that's our fence nicely aligned right there. And again, what if we wanted to duplicate all of those things? You can even group and save these as a group. So if I wanted to do that, I can do that. Control D and hey, look, suddenly I have a whole other load of fences. So we could have another one that goes here on this side like this. Press X. OK, so you can move it. And then when you have it roughly in position, instead of placing that, you press X. And then that's going to put you into this XY grid. And again, we can just do this. Now, another way of doing it would be to select those items like this. And instead of duplicating it, I would press Control and X. And then remember, as we did before, it's going to put it straight away onto that X axis. So that I can make sure that these are perfectly in alignment. And then I can just move that over here to about there, I guess. Click OK. And hey, we suddenly have fences. And you can see how all of these little things together, in a very short space of time, like we've created uh, an information and health med bay right next to our uh, restrooms. So it's a really nice way of kind of just building in. I think that gives you the best overview of how to kind of build and detail scenery in here. We've covered pretty much everything there. Um, and then there's other things you can do in and around the paths. Like, for example, you can find benches. Um, and when you have benches, look, see the benches will snap on to the edges of the path and people love to have benches to sit on so these are always a good thing to kind of put into your park Again, you can just duplicate that look and move and put it there bins as well you want to make sure you have plenty of bins because people are really bad in the park at uh, just throwing their litter everywhere so you can see that's why pretty much everywhere people are you'll see like a bin 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 they're just all over the place because if you don't have that people will just litter constantly so before we get to ride placement in terms of building a thrill ride or building a, a roller coaster or something like this, what about the management of people in the park? It's something you need to be aware of. There is a tab bottom left here called park management or as I say you can just hit number one and that will bring up the uh, overview. So basically under your overview you have a lot of different information here about money, people's thoughts, etc. You can check your graphs in terms of how well you're doing. You can adjust here your ticket prices. You can adjust the open close time of your parks. Uh, you can adjust the ticket price for standard, family, priority pass, uh, park rating, breakdowns, all this stuff. You've got your finance tables right here. You can see how much you're making. So I'm making generally about 20k uh, every month. Um, research. So this is when you research rides. This To begin with, you have a lot to research. I'm basically currently just going through the roller coasters. And when you research... It'll tell you that's a new ride. And then you can start to research. I've got another coaster to research, lots of coasters. Again, you can adjust the quantity here between 1 and 3K. Depending on, and that will basically speed that up if I was to type 3,000. Like that. So that'll basically adjust the amount of time it takes you to research that. Marketing, you can also do three marketing at a time. Oh, sorry, four campaigns at a time. So you can do newspapers. All of these appeal to like different individuals. So uh, different newspaper ads. So it's like um, poster campaign, low impact, attracts teenagers for smaller parks, uh, cereal box, more for families. And then you've got some TV. Basically, all of them attract either like families, teenagers or adults. And then there's some social media kind of like phone campaigns. So all of these, you can have them renew or just do it for one month to bring more people into the park. Okay, then staff. Staff is obviously pretty critical important. Okay, so we've got a guy right here who has quit. Luke Renault has quit. Now, you can rehire that person. So he's like, I guess I could come back to work. He was unhappy, whatever. So let's. he was a trainee. Okay, so I'm going to rehire this guy. This is a good example. Now, the reason he probably quit is because he probably didn't have enough training and he was having to deal with a lot of different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him extra training. Okay, now that won't immediately improve his skills because he has to go to a staff room before he's able to train up. But what I will need to do is adjust his salary. And usually you want to just put that up by about $10 or whatever. So just bang that in. If he's not happy then. You can also under your staff, you see you can adjust what they do. Uh, but anyway, whilst we're dealing with it, let's go back to our staff table. Basically, our staff table here, like I say, it shows overall what people are doing, all your staff in the park. And you want to keep half an eye on this because it will give you constant updates. See, this is a this is a misdirection. This is all to do with staff. It says here, multiple shops are still missing a vendor. So if you open your notification, you can see down here, but a lot of these are, a lot of these are out of date. It says, shop hot dog squad 8 still missing a vendor. If I click that, 
it will take me to that shop. Now, there's a very straightforward reason why this guy's missing a vendor. It's because the staff room for the vendor is way down here. It's way, 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 way. Here's the staff room. And the reason is I didn't want to pay out for a staff room that was up here just for the sake of two shops. So basically, shortly, I was going to build more stuff over here, and then I was going to get another staff room kind of on this corner, which would service them a bit better than the one down there. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. As I say, basically, you can look at your staff here and you can see how they're doing. Now, this park is quite busy. So you want to make uh, keep an eye on basically who has low or high workloads and then adjust their training so that they can cope with that workload appropriately. So you can see right here, now, this, this janitor right here, he's got like, you can see sort of moderate levels of happiness and energy, but it says he has a normal workload. And it also says he's heading to staff building. So chances are, I don't really need to skill this guy up. He's probably dealing with it just fine. But if you have someone over here like this, this security guy, he's got red happiness, normal workload. But maybe he would like a bit more training. So there are these kind of things to keep an eye on. But then, for example, like, look at this guy, Jarrett Betts. Okay, he's got a high workload, but he's very happy and very energized. But again, if you were to skill them up, it's still going to help them out a little bit. Now in terms of staff, what have we got? So you can hire staff. You have your main things are janitor, your mechanics, your uh, security guards, and then your vendors. Okay, so under entertainers as well, there's a load of different entertainers, which are all these guys. So King Coaster, he's like the park mascot. You have the ghost a guy okay so he's like a kind of scary one these sort of pirate people futuristic uh, fairy tale stuff and then these are all the kind of shop mascots so like chief beef for the uh, burgers gulpy rex for the sodas uh, street fox coffee for the coffee uh, tiki chiki is like kind of whatever that is i don't know mexican food whatever it's uh i don't know what it is ribs and all sorts of stuff whatever uh, cosmic cow milks and milkshakes and um ice cream and stuff like that Okay, and then, uh, so then you've got your janitors, so we have that, vendors, all these things. So you can keep an eye on everybody's different levels. Mechanics are critically important. Very, very important to make sure that you have enough mechanics for the different areas of the park. And again, making sure that they have the skills to, well, I either handle a low or a high workload. If they have a low workload, they can get unhappy stupidly. They can get unhappy about that as well. So you might want to increase their uh, training right there. Now, another thing is rosters for your staff, okay? So rosters for the staff, you can see I've got four rosters. Now, if I click on uh, this, this is work roster for section one. So what this does is this shows all of the places which qualify as section one. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but these rides have got a very slight highlight on them, okay? And this is where you can see these. See, these are like blue. And here the stations are blue. And these rides here are selected. So basically, all the stuff in this section here, in the bottom left, is section one. Okay, I'm just going to click that off. Now if I was to go to, say, section four, you can see section four is just this ride here, this roller coaster here, and these shops. And the reason we have these sections set up is so that you can better distribute your staff. You have your staff just free roam all the time. That's not going to be good because if they're free roaming constantly, they might not get to a certain place. They might deal with one area very well and never go to another area. And you want to make it's also easier to keep track of your staff and make sure that, you know, I know I've got, say, like two mechanics in an area where there are many rides, but one mechanic in an area where there's less rides. So it's a, it's a good way of kind of keeping track and managing everything that you have going on. In terms of management, again, it depends on how you want to play. Like some people get really into sort of learning all of the bits and pieces that they can absolutely finitely maximize profit on. I kind of consider that sort of slightly metering the game. You know, it's kind of like it's all these things like how far down do you go when it comes to that kind of stuff with the financial management of it? Like, you know, do you work out well, this is going to get me like 10 cents here or 20, you know, a dollar here? You know, how do you work with that? I find it's basically just a good rule of thumb to kind of just sort of play it by ear a little bit. I prefer to play games like that anyway. So you can see here as well, like shops that are making a lot of money and shops that are not making a lot of money. Uh, these are rides, though. But if you go down here, you can see like shops. You see like sh some shops are not making as much money at all and some are. But again, sometimes it's like these are all facilities. So most of these are not going to be making us any profit. Um, and then you have like smaller attractions, uh, restaurants, which I don't have any of, hotels, which I... Uh, is again, like the, the hotel not making... It's actually got low prestige, the hotel as well. I need to get that up a little bit. I guess one other thing I can just look at very, very quickly, this is a very classic um, theme park thing, is uh, selling of your items. So like if we go to Cosmic Cow, 
Okay, and then we go to items for sale. Again, look, you can put extras on this stuff. Like if you want to, you can put different extras. You can sync it between all of your shops to make sure all of your shops have the same items and the same elements. And again, basically, if you put extras on, then basically it's going to probably cost you a little bit more, but people are going to want to buy that stuff more. And you can adjust your prices accordingly by like a dollar or two here or there. Again, leave it to you. There are guides, again, if you want to make sure you ultra maximize this. But personally, I just find just do whatever you want to. Um, anyway, so basically when it comes to money, though, there's a couple of things to be aware of. You can disable the prestige system, uh, but the prestige system basically works out kind of like the value of a ride, the value of whatever it is. If it has more prestige, then people are going to want to go on that ride more. Now, another thing to be aware of is if we go on to this ride, you can see this ride is a classic ride. Okay, You can also see how much profit this ride has made. You can see how long the queue is for it, monthly guests, the queue scenery. That's how nice the, the scenery around the queuing is obviously lifetime guests as well and there's a load of other information here testing of the ride finances what it's costing this is the prestige tab uh, customize its colors operations in terms of wait time priority pass all this stuff maintenance you can adjust from when a mechanic sees it every you know again with maintenance you want to make sure like um if it's an average one maybe it gets seen a little bit more if it has good reliability it needs to be seen less well again you need to adjust and manage that with your mechanics to make sure that gets done and then importantly here the sequence as well so the sequence basically is for example like how long the ride will operate for what sequences will it go through before it finishes etc okay and you can either work that out yourself or you can like, you know, search it on Steam. There's a load of guides that tell you like different ways to maximize the profit on these rides. When it comes to, you can see I'm actually charging for this very simple ride. I'm charging a lot. I'm charging $28 for people to ride on this ride. And you think that sounds like a hell of a lot. People are going to pay that? Yep, they sure will. In fact, people have been pretty much consistently riding this from the very beginning. Now, why are people happy to pay that to go on that ride? It's because of the prestige. If we go back to the overview, you can see the prestige for this ride is 1,043. It's five stars. And there's different factors which come into that. Some of it's to do with the sequence, like what the sequence is. It's also to do with stuff like the Q scenery rating and so on, and just the kind of overall vibe that people have about the ride. Now, the, the Q scenery rating and the prestige, the prestige is five stars. A very, very rough guide that you can use is that one full star of prestige equates to about four or five dollars. OK, so now obviously, if we were just doing it like at a four dollar value, you're going to be able to basically charge like twenty dollars for that. If we were doing five by five, then it's going to be obviously twenty five. But I've pushed it a little bit further. It's at twenty eight. The reason I pushed it at twenty eight is because this is a classic ride. So it basically adjust the reputation a little bit. When it, and what we need to look at here is the prestige, if you want to make sense of this. So this is the prestige rating. If you actually look at prestige, you can see that when a new ride comes in, OK, when a ride is first opened, it has a boost of one hundred and ten percent. And then when it gets established, so this is this is the timeline, okay? When it gets established, uh, that hype wears off and it's just a kind of ordinary ride. Later down the line, it will start to age. And when the ride is considered like aging or it's a bit of an old ride in the park, it's going to have less prestige, which means people are going to want to pay less to go on that ride. And when a ride is old, not very popular ride, very few people are going to want to go on that ride. And again, they're going to want to charge less. However, you can rebrand your ride at any time. If you rebrand your ride, it's going to refresh it. And so basically, you have to make a bit of a judgment. If we go to this ride right here, so you can see that this ride has an established rating. Okay, this is an established ride. Uh, it's also got 74% Q rating. Uh, and you can see it's only got three prestige stars. Okay, so what am I charging for this ride? I'm charging $18. I'm charging a little bit more. Now, I was charging 18 because when I first set up this ride, it obviously had the... Uh, it had the brand new ride rating, okay, 110%. But now its prestige has dropped a little bit. So I should probably actually wind that price down a little and maybe charge like $15 for that ride. That's probably going to be the more appropriate price for people to be paying to go on that ride right now. If we go back to this little prestige tab, you can see right here, as I say, through the timeline, so 11 years until it becomes classic, but if I want to, once it gets to like aging or old, and also notice how with this ride, see how this ride actually ages more quickly than the ride that we looked at before. And I say, if I rebrand that, that will bring it back to being a, an established ride. You can basically refresh it and just kind of like give it a bit of 
overhaul basically like i say if we go back to this ride and look at this ride see how on this ride's timeline much bigger space before it ages so depending on different rides you're going to have different rates of kind of aging etc same with this one okay with my roller coaster in fact the roller coaster here this big roller coaster um it's still not classic in fact it's barely started to age which is concerning to me because once this ride starts to age i mean this ride brings in a good amount of money um i mean it's bringing in like look last month's profit five thousand dollars so you see, this is the difference. With these little kind of thrill rides, um, you could probably afford to let it just drag on and become a classic. But with a big ride like this, because it brings me in so much mo money per month, $5,000, I might not want to wait for the time that it's going to take before it becomes classic. Because that's going to be a long time, six years, all right? And it's already been, okay, it starts aging in one month. So it's, it's probably already been about that time, you know, that it's been established for. So do I want to pay whatever it costs? Look, do I want to pay like three grand sort of one month's uh, profit from this to make sure that for the next six years it continues to make that much profit? So that's kind of like a judgment call you need to make on how you want your rides to go. Or do we just take the hit knowing that in the long term, when it gets to classic, that is just going to permanently from that point on make a bank load of money. So you need to kind of just decide that for yourself. So when it comes to rides, you have a variety of selections here, mainly gentle rides for families or thrill rides that are a bit more exciting. Again, you can just choose all of them or whatever. So if we do a thrill ride here. We haven't done it. We'll just throw this in just to really quick, quickly show you. But it's very, very straightforward. Um, let's just choose like um, Skrrr. We'll just bang this in. I'm probably not going to save this. Now notice how this is intersecting with the land over here, right? Now what you can do is, again, you can choose flattened terrain okay on the bottom right and what that will do is surprisingly when i put this in it will flatten the terrain to make sure that that ride actually sits within there because otherwise what you would have to do is you would have to landscape that terrain before you could actually use this ride two things so basically you can set up your sequence so you could for example add in some different animations here okay and that's going to basically make a ride potentially more valuable people want to pay a little bit more to go onto that ride you can adjust all the colors and whatnot so if we go to colors here and again like you can just see we can style this up a little differently if we want to make it look a little bit more or less or whatever. Okay, so click OK. And then the operator color. The operator color is the person standing in here. So again, unlike other staff, if you want to, you can uh, style this guy to look, you know, in keeping with the ride or whatever. Just so they they look kind of like part of that ride, whatever you want. You can choose music and stuff for your uh, ride. And then over here we have operations. So this is where minimum rider load, half load. That tells you basically how many people are going to be in on the ride waiting before the ride actually begins. So do they have to wait for a half load or do they have to wait for, say, three quarter load? Um, also the wait time. Some of these rides can take a little while for people to get off and get in on the ride. So you might want to extend that a little bit on the maximum wait time uh, to make sure that you have enough time to get people onto the ride. And also below that we have the priority pass. Now priority pass information booths sell your people in your park a priority pass that enables them to kind of basically skip the queue if a ride is very busy now i usually enable that at this point but early on you might not want to bother so then we've got to place the entrances now when it comes to queues this is actually probably one of the biggest tips that i can give is that when it comes to queuing and there's the exit look we'll just put that in there when it comes to queuing a big mistake people often make is to make their queues very very big and that is a big mistake because you do not want a very, very, very long queue. Now, in real life, in real life, a lot of theme parks do have very long queues. But there's a very straightforward reason for that, which is that in real life, most parks that you go to will charge you a flat entry price. So they'll charge you, like, for a family pass, like, $200. Or in the UK, they'll charge you, like, 60 quid per person or 50. I don't know. Whatever. But basically, they'll charge you to go into the park. Okay? They won't charge you per ride. Now, for some reason, in Planet Coaster... Although technically you can do that, in technically in Planet Coaster you can charge a big price at the gate and then make all your rides free. I have tried to do this and it has never worked for me. I don't know why. I think mechanically they just did not design the kind of economy of the game in that way. So it just doesn't really work, which means that you have to do it this other way where you charge per ride. Now, personally, I wish they had taken the time to make it so, so the park itself charged in that. Other, I wish you had the choice, basically, the choice to do it either way it would have been a great thing but it's not so what you have to be aware of is when people are in your park they only are going to be in the park for so long 
And what you don't want is for that person to spend their entire day standing in a queue. Because when they're standing in a queue, they're not spending money. You want that person to be able to go on a ride and then get onto another ride and another ride and go to a shop, go to the restaurant, whatever. Um, you don't want them just standing in a queue. And also, if a ride has a short queue and that queue gets full, other people are going to come along and go, queue's full, I guess I'll go somewhere else. And they'll go find somewhere else to spend their money. But if you forcibly make them wait in a big queue, they're just basically then trapped in that queue and you're not going to make money. Now look for this ride. This is a this is a, quite a big ride, big you know, but it doesn't have a long queue. Look. See, we have a fairly short queue. Because the start of the queue is only right here at this point. Because, again, like I say, you know, we want... Also, here, here's another thing, just as we saw this happen. If you see people turning away from your queue, that doesn't automatically mean that your ride is too expensive. But you do want to check, check with people why they turned away. So I'm going to click on this guy. Look, the queue for Colorado Creek seems to go on forever. He's talking a lot of nonsense because, look, it's not actually that big. Different people as well have different standards as to what they will or won't go on. So, again, don't take that guy's word as read for why he's not going on there. Like, for example, if I was to just speed the game up here, look, for as many people are, are turning away, you'll see other people... Actually, there's a lot of people turning away on this one. Um, but, uh, like I say, it's not actually a bad thing. You think If we check on one of the people, like, the queue is too long, long queue. I mean, it, it's a nonsense, really. I was going to I was already going to go on Colorado Creek but that advert makes me more excited. That's basically this sign here. They sort of see it. Now again, a lot of people turning away there. But like I say, it's not a bad thing because these people that are here, they're going on the ride, okay? Those people there, they're just going to walk off and, and they're going to spend their money somewhere else. So do you see this is my point. It's a really good thing to make your uh, queue not so long. But the other thing as well to remember is that um like I say, sometimes you'll see ride like let's, let's go over here for example. Um so the lair, this this big roller coaster. Now you're gonna watch watch here, and and people will turn away, and some people will go in, right? Look, see those guys are going in. Those guys are going in. They're going in. They're going in. They're going in. <laughs> and they turned away. Now, why did they turn away? I didn't have enough money to go on the lair. I didn't have enough money. See, look, these guys, they turned away. I've spent so much, I can't go on the lair. So you see, look. It's not, it's not that they think the ride is too expensive or that they don't want it or that the queue is too long, but they've just spent their money. So it's important to actually check um, why people aren't going on a ride. Now, if every single person that was turning away was saying like, oh, it's, it's way too expensive, I don't want to pay it, maybe you need to think about changing the price. But if they're turning away just because they spent their money, well, you have some options. You could put some ATMs down. But over in this area here, I have a lot of ATMs already. There's an ATM here. There's an ATM over here. So I have plenty of ATMs for people to... Be, you know, let's see that they're going to get some money out. People are going to get money out or whatever. But sometimes people only have so much money, they don't want to spend more money. So there's a lot of different reasons why people may or may not go on a ride. You shouldn't panic if you see people turning away from your ride because it probably is just the people themselves and not actually your ride. Okay, so let's come back to this now that we've talked about queues. So very easy to build an actual queue. So basically you click on the paths down the bottom right and in the paths you have path, you have natural paths okay and then you have queue and what we want is the queue so i'm going to use the standard queue which i've been using throughout this park now again you can use a freestyle queue or you can do an angle queue if you do the angle snap queue then this is going to basically do what it says on the tin it's going to snap the queue so what i want to do is i'm going to build it like this and then we're going to come along here now you can see look you can see that actually see how this queue here is not aligning perfectly i don't think with that path on the left but it's it's not bad you know so take it as it comes right so i'm probably going to want this queue to be about that long i guess now the other thing we need to do is do the priority pass so now place priority pass entrance and the priority pass is just a way for people to basically skip and bypass the queue a little bit that's all it is priority pass exit which I should be able to get there, but it's not going to want to let me. This is always how this goes. Oh, there we go. We can get it. I say, weirdly, we can get it kind of like on that corner. That's quite obscure, but okay, whatever. Uh, connect the priority pass. And then it takes us back to the queue. And usually I go with this little orange style. And then we're just going to go straight down the line. And the game's going to be a bane in the ass for me. Okay, that's fine. What I will do then is so I will take off angle snap. I uh, see this is what what this is is where this position has been is that you can see it's it's basically it's not happy about how we're coming out from here. So what I'm probably going to have to do is 
click back on this and place the exit again. This is messing up my whole queue system very badly. See, the only, the only other way that we could do this, like, I'll just... We'll, we'll, tr we'll, we'll troubleshoot this in real time so you get an idea of some of the things that you have to deal with. So basically, what's occurring here is that this position here... I'm probably just going to start again. Because what it is, is this, this corner here is not giving me as much space as I need. So what I'm going to want to do is get the width correct for starters and snap back on. And then maybe it's very problematic because right now, right here we don't have quite enough space. Another thing you could do is you could just move the whole ride a little bit. So we could just move the ride a little like this. Go okay. It's going to eat a little bit more of that corner away but again what I would do is come in here with some bushes and stuff to disguise that basically. So now we can go back to uh, our queue. Okay, and then I'm basically going to do what I did before. And now because it's a little bit longer, we probably only need to go to about here, I guess. Okay, so now we'll do the priority pass again. And now this time, yeah, you can see. So now I can place this very easily here. So this is the entrance. So this actually wants to be over here like this. And we can have the exit nicely where it needs to be. Somewhere like this, I guess. Okay, and then we're going to connect that up. I'm going to start from here. That's smaller. Okay, what might be triggering for some people is that... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether that's perfectly spaced out correctly, but... Basically, you get the idea. I mean, it's, it's good enough. It's good enough for me just demonstrating to you how you build a queue and a path. So then basically from here, we're going to want to work out like, okay, so what is the ride worth? Well, right now we need to test the ride. Okay. So we need to test the ride to work out. Cause remember we, we adjusted the sequence. Okay. So we need to test the ride to work out what it's worth. So the ride's going to start up like, so it's doing its test. And then the test rating is going to basically give us an evaluation of what the ride is worth and its prestige. So if you wanted to, you could play around with these sequences and try and you know, do different things to try and get it better. You could spend time doing You don't have to do this live in the game. You could just go to an empty park and just mess around with it until you find, like, whatever rating you find works the best. The other thing, of course, is you can see the Q scenery rating is really low. And the reason it's really low is because we haven't put any Q scenery around here whatsoever. Okay, so the ride has finished its test, and you can see we've got excitement of 2.2, uh, fear of 3.2, and nausea 3.1. So that gives us an overview of quite a low prestige rating. Okay, so you might want to, for example, change that up in order to get a better prestige. So we're going to go in and we're going to change this up and just try to improve and see whether we can get a little better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out. Okay, so we're going to have, we'll start off with a spin and then I'm going to add in like, let's say eight. Okay, four, seven, eight. Okay, so I'm going to put like spin fast, spin fast, spin fast, spin fast, spin fast. Then we'll have spin and spin. Okay, so we'll leave it like that. We'll test this. So we're going to stop and start the test sequence. We'll run this test sequence again and we'll see what we get. Okay, so after that result, you can see things are quite different. So the first time we did it, we only had one star. But now you can see we've almost got three stars. I can probably very easily put this at 15 or even probably something like $16 now. So I can charge, you know, a great some more for this ride so now if we open this ride okay let's see what happens and let's see how many people are going on it and there we go look immediately people are going on people are going on people are going on so i can charge much more for this ride and there's gonna be plenty of people look who are wanting to go on this ride and that's even right now we haven't even got the scenery rating done up for in and around uh, the ride so for example let's just do that really really quickly so what i'm going to show you is how to quickly decor okay around uh, the actual scenery. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit and I'm just going to slap a load of stuff in and around that ride. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search around uh, for somewhere else that I have decored. So for example, like right here. So this is a little cheat, like if you just want to save some time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select these little rocks right here. Okay. I'm just going to drag across there and duplicate 
And then once I've duplicated, we're going to go way back over here to the ride. Okay. And then we're going to just try to sit this in here. I'm going to pull this down. Now, I can get this roughly in position, and then after that, I can move stuff, right? So we'll just get this in the ground. That's about right. That's just moved all of those objects. But then we can customize and move all these other objects ourselves. They don't have to stay where they are. And we wouldn't want them to because it's like, that's okay, having a bit of intersection right there. So then we can take that and we could maybe, for example, uh, do a little bit more. So we could take some of these pieces, like right here, duplicate just these. And then you can see this actually stylistically fits quite well with the other stuff that we had going on. Now let's see how just placing these has affected the Q scenery. Okay, we're up to 28%. Okay, now special effects can be a good thing to have in and around the ride or lights or music as well. So for example, like, let's just maybe grab another one of these rocks right here. Okay, and I'll just rotate that rock in there. So again, maybe we want to have some music, right? So let's just grab uh, some speakers. Drop the vintage filter. Okay, speakers. So there's various little speakers that you can put in. Park speaker for display, for music, for triggered. Okay, not to make people triggered. But like, uh, and you can see again, this is set on a line to uh, surface for this, which is not what I want. So get this, turn the speaker around. Okay. Then we're going to just rotate it back a little bit. And then we're going to just recess it into that rock. Maybe it wants to move down a little bit. Okay. And then by doing that, and we could grab another one of those. Okay, if I can, actually. Sometimes once you've uh, set an object into a rock, it can be... Well, there we go. A little bit tricky to grab hold of it again. Um, again, people are coming in from the queue right here as well. So maybe we want to grab, like, another little speaker there. Just kind of, you know, like, put it into the rock. Um, and similarly, maybe we want to just turn this guy around, rotate it in, drop it down. Okay, really straightforward, really easy. But let's just see how placing those in alone. Oh, look, we've gone from 28 to nearly 50% just by putting a couple of little speakers in. And then, okay, what about uh, bushes? Why don't we just grab a few? Okay, people love trees and bushes in this for some reason. So grab some big bushes here, look. And we can just drop them in there. Maybe there's a couple little uh, little extra trees here as well. And again, this all kind of like works within the sort of leafy style, which is my park. So it all kind of fits together. And again, depending, you can have an entirely themed park if you wanted. You could have a park that's entirely spooky themed. You know, it's all kind of like horror and Halloween. Uh, you can have a park which is all futuristic. You can have a ride which is... Uh, a ride. You can have a park. You can have a park which is all pirate themed, or all fairy tale themed, or or just generic, which is basically what I've got going on with this park. I quite like the kind of generic leafy style of park. You know, I think it works quite nicely. So again, look, there we go. We'll drop that in there, and then you know, over here, I've been wanting to sort of fill in this space for some time. Maybe we just want to kind of get a few big trees in there, and this actually matches this other area over here quite well. Now, another thing to think about though is uh, density of rides. Because one thing that I've found over time is that it can actually be not the best thing to have too many rides too close together. So when it comes to actually uh, this park, I probably won't save and keep any of this here because I didn't really want to have um, another thrill ride basically right here. What I'm waiting for is I'm actually waiting for a very specific roller coaster to unlock because in this area where I'm building right now, I wanted to put this big water styled roller coaster. But as I say, we're not quite there yet. Um, I still have to unlock it. I'm waiting for that. Okay, so now with all of that in there, let's see what our QC is. Now it's 77%. So you could carry on with this and push it as far as you want to go. But you can see, look, there's plenty of people coming in now. Again, look, why are they walking away? Don't feel like spending blah, blah, blah. Okay, not giving me his reasons why they're not going on the ride. Yeah, you can see that basically as we go along, I'm sure more people will come in onto the ride. These guys are not. Yeah, there we are. It's filling up. Ah, oh, look. And see these guys here. Look, they're taking the priority pass. And when it comes to the priority pass as well, 
you can actually adjust this. So priority pass, you can have equal priority, high priority. So basically equal priority affects the value of priority passes as well. So basically if you want to make your um, if you want to make your priority pass better value, okay, so basically priority passes get sold from the information booth. See, I'm charging $10. Now if you want to make that possibly sell it for more, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to adjust those high priorities for all of the rides. So that basically people are like, okay, it's worth me getting a priority pass that's expensive because it's going to let me skip those queues often, basically. Let me just speed forward. Okay, see, here, here's how the high priority works. So basically, for every person going through, look, see, they're just going to let those guys go. And these guys right here are going to be giving them the, uh, the dagger eyes. Okay, but there's still plenty of people are going to get to go on there. And you can see, look, the queue is already building up really, really nicely. Plenty of people waiting to go on. So basically, that's how you would put a ride into the park. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, right? The last thing we need to think about is, of course, coasters, okay? Load of coasters in the game, loads of different ones. If I just click on some of mine. Now, there are, there are, one thing I will say, there are some amazing coasters that people build on the Steam Workshop, okay? But the problem is, is if we go to custom, to, uh, we go to source, okay? You'll create a Steam Workshop, okay? There's a ride. Now, all these rides are really cool. Don't get me wrong. But Temple Raider is a really good one, okay? I love this ride. However, the problem with these rides is that they use up a Christ ton of objects. This is the big problem. And I actually find, and this is one of, like, okay, see, look. An epic ride, but look how many objects, so many objects. And this is a problem because a lot of rides and stuff that are on the Steam Workshop, they look fantastic in isolation, but they also use a Christ ton of objects. And that can have performance issues on your game. So let's just place this in here. Now once it's placed, okay, once it's actually placed in the park, it's not too bad. Okay, and you can see I've got quite a big park already, but you can see just from me kind of moving around here, the performance issue is not too bad. However, if as you see when we'll go to my other park, it all adds up. I've been quite careful with this park to try and keep the objects and the items at about a medium level. Like I haven't gone crazy because it's very easy to go crazy. Now this is a great ride. Okay, don't get me wrong. Let me let's test this ride. Look, and you guys can ride it and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is a fantastic ride, looks excellent. But like I say, that, that object count is very, very high. undoubtedly a cool ride but like i say the issue that you always have with these things is they're just very very big and uh it just depends on kind of what you want to have in your park basically and we can just delete that out of there and like i say you can probably get away with maybe having one of these big pre-built rides into your uh into your game uh but you know more than that and you know it starts to get a little bit testy okay now before we build uh i don't think we'll build a whole ride but i'll just show you some of the basics but when it comes to building coasters, there's a very big tip I have, and not just coasters, actually for rides as well and other things. 
So what you want to do is hit escape, go to your options, then you want to go to settings, and you're going to want it to go to game. Okay, so game. Now, the thing that you want to turn on, see here you can turn on reputation if you want to, you can turn on security features if you want to. There's a lot of things that you can t turn on and off, staff management features, all these things. Uh, disable track limits, so it removes the limits on banking and sloping, etc. Now, here's the thing that you want to do. Okay, so basically, disable scenery collision, stops rides and stations from preventing scenery placement. Also, disable coaster collision, turn that on, allows coasters to be placed through existing scenery or terrain. Okay, disable ride collision also allows rides to be placed through existing scenery or terrain. And disable terrain collision allows terrain to be manipulated through existing scenery or track. Now there's a reason why those are important. Those things are basically put in as safeguards to prevent people from having weird glitching rides that kind of go underground, through ground and stuff like this. But there's a very specific reason why you want to turn those things on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for now one of my rides. Okay, so let's take for example uh, this ride right here, Deadfall. This is the ride which is, which is over there. Okay, the one that the orange one with the rock thing. And you can see, look, when I come to bring this ride into the park, notice how this ride is all above ground. Okay, but you can see how the station here, because it basically by default the game doesn't want to place that below ground right but i want to because that's the whole point of the ride so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to move that a little and then i'm going to drop this down so that the station is near to ground level but look at the track on my right hand side see how that's going down underground we're going to bring this down look to about ground level to about there okay now the problem is that obviously the ride goes underground now there's a reason for this though if we go to our terrain tool it's basically, imagine how you would have to do this if you couldn't now just dig the terrain out. If I couldn't put the ride, I'd have to like dig a whole load of terrain out and try to guesstimate like how much I needed to do in order to place this ride. But by doing it this way, it places the ride and then all you have to do is dig out that space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this push tool right here. I'm going to drop the size down and leave it at 100%. We're just trying to illustrate like uh, the point here. So basically you can see there's a section which comes through here, look that comes back around where it goes underground. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deform this terrain through here. Okay. And again, you can let the ride test and go around so that you can make sure it's the, you know, the correct width and all this. But basically, I just want to illustrate how you do this. All right. Let me drop that down a little bit more. Okay. And we're just going to dig through here. And you can do this like however you want to. You can see like over here is where it needs to come out. Okay, there you go. So now we've basically successfully deformed that terrain. But then maybe also, like I say, we want to kind of just, you know, go, I'm not going to do the whole thing. But look, you can kind of go through and do more of this. There's a roughen tool, which is quite useful. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. The roughen tool basically roughens the edges of these terrains. You don't want to go too far with it, but it can just help a little bit to just kind of like make this look a little bit more stylistically correct. Uh, we can make that a bit smaller there. And we can just drop this down here, look. Drop this down. And again, we could dig underneath, right underneath if we wanted to, make it a bit deeper of a hole. And we could add maybe even, uh, I, I haven't got this on my other ride, but maybe if we drop this down enough here, we could add in uh, some water, for example. I'll show you how real quickly to do that, seeing as we're doing terrain. That seems a good thing to just showcase. Let me dig this down here, look. And then you can you can also paint the terrain okay so with painting there's different rock textures like this which are, work really nicely and the main thing to notice with this is how well this feathers um, which is what i mean by sort of the blending on the edges it blends really really nicely uh, there's several different styles of rock texture as well there's this one which is a slightly lighter rock texture and the other one i was just using there's a bit of a heavier rock texture uh, this one here is a more sort of dusty rock texture so you can see just by kind of like blending those together you can get quite a nice effect and then you could place individual scenery rocks as well should you want to kind of expand that but water what about if we have some uh, you basically have calm water rough standing and dirty let's have some dirty water all right so get that in there Look, delicious dirty water okay but if we had this standing water as well we could uh, switch that up probably maybe let's take that out there we go you can just see the different styles so that's standing it's a little bit cloudy uh, rough water. Okay, rough water, so it's a bit of a... 
this rough sheen to it. Oh, there we are. You're just a bit of movement on the water. So anyway, that's basically how you would add some water in. Now what about digging out that bigger hole that we saw where the drop goes all the way down? Yep, well, this is also going to be a thing, obviously. So we're going to want to make sure we have enough width, but this is a great example of how the deformation tools work in this. Now again, I can do this fairly roughly, uh, but like I say, you can go over to where we already have this ride built and you can see what you can achieve with that. So basically, all we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and then we're just going to basically dig our way through. I, I should just do this with a bigger brush right now, but it's like... Yeah, you could do it with a small brush and make this look more like an actual kind of cave or some kind of naturally dug out space, right? Let's widen it a little bit as we go along as well. And you can see the light coming through because we're getting close to the surface. Drop the brush size down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there we go. And that has created our bit of space right there. And again, then you could go on and deform it further. Make it however you want to. Alright. Okay, so that's our ride. So then we can just like test that out real quick. Test the ride out. Off we go. Okay, here we go in our freshly dug ride, and we'll be able to see how this works for us. Okay, and there you go, you can see the whole thing works fantastically. But then also, kind of dull, kind of dull as well to come around to the end, not particularly exciting. So what else could you do to make this ride a bit more interesting? Well, rather than just place loads of rocks and trees around, again, you can actually use the terrain deformation tools to go in the other direction. So instead of pushing into them and digging them out, what you can actually do is you can pull the terrain. Pull the terrain. They're pulling this terrain up here. And this will enable you to make really, and we've done this in the past, you'll see on uh, some other rides when I quickly just showcase another park of mine after we just do this. But you can basically deform, and because the terrain will actually intersect with the ride, we can actually deform this terrain way up and through the ride here like this. We can just do that, right? And again, you can take a lot more time and, you know, really do this with a lot of detail. This isn't going to make the ride crash as it goes around. Also, the classic question, can people crash the ride, etc.? No. Right, so then we're going to want to change it up to push. As this this will just intersect right now when it goes through. Look. Okay, so it just kind of ignores that it's there. But then what you could do, you would obviously, I don't think I'm going to take the time to go all the way through with this, but you can get the idea, right? You would basically dig all the way through here, and uh, we would basically have another tunnel, which would... Uh, so that's basically, you can just imagine what you could do here. You could just do this. You could cover the entire thing. You could build it all up. And this is a much more efficient for the game to build the actual terrain deformation tools rather than placing lots of rocks all around your ride. Um, there's a reason why people do that on the Steam Workshop. It's because they want their rides... Uh, okay, a good example would be, if we go back to our coasters, and we go back to uh, Steam Workshops, a good example of, of people wanting to make their ride stay a specific way is this one here the gold mine okay now this one has again like a bonkers bonkers amount of objects in takes a little while to even render it because there's so many objects okay now this one here is a good example uh so we drop this down into the ground a little bit Okay, okay, it's placed it now. Okay, now the reason, okay, this is what I'm talking about. So using the terrain deformation tools is a much more efficient and frame friendly way of doing it. However, with this ride, you can see basically you can't load the terrain deformations through the Steam Workshop. So people often build their rides for Steam by using a lot of all, all of these, all of these rocks are all individual objects. Okay, and the reason is, is they want to make sure that the gold mine looks and feels a certain way. And don't get me wrong, it's a great ride. This is, this is why I have it. This is why I downloaded it. It's a great, awesome looking ride. It's really, really cool. But it also is a crazy, crazy amount of objects because they've had to use all of these rocks to actually make this ride work. Um, 
But anyway, yeah, you get the idea. So all of this leads us to how do we make our own rides? Well, it's actually really straightforward. A lot of people quitting because I'm not paying attention to my staff like I normally would. Um, how do you make a ride? How do you make a coaster? It's really, really easy. Um, I'm probably not going to show you the whole thing from start to finish because we've already done a lot of things in this video today. Uh, but basically, let's just choose a ride. Let's choose something really straightforward. Let's just choose... Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's just choose this one here. Okay, so custom ride will make it really simple. Maybe I can finish this if I'm quick. So basically, first of all, you're going to bang your station in there. And I'm not going to have time to go through all the features of this. So I'm just going to go through it and just show you, you get the vague idea. So basically, chain lift pulls up an incline. We all know this. This is how coasters work. Basically, you're going to lift that up. Okay, we're going to place the pieces of the ride. And then at the top, we're going to want to drop that down to a level. Okay. Now then you're going to want to switch over to drive tires, which are going to push the train along slow. Okay. And again, you have options here. You can have track supports if you want. You can have a catwalk if you want to. You can turn that on. Okay. So you're going to place one, turn it around. Okay. And then maybe here, maybe at that point, uh, actually, I kind of like that this thing is coming around like that. Let's do that. And then let's switch back to ordinary track. Pull this out. Let's see if we can get away with this. I think that's a little bit tight, unfortunately. Go back one way. So we're going to have basically a standard piece of track there. It's still going to turn around look like this, though, right? So we can turn off the catwalk at this point. Now, there's different ways that you can attach to the coaster as you're building it here, these cameras. So you can basically have dynamic you can pull off of it okay attach to it and rotate you can always move your camera off of it but if you click on these it basically brings you back onto that center point okay so there we are so build this i'm just going to make this really straightforward so let's just have it come down like this i'm just trying to even it as we go and right, now we're sort of headed back in the right direction okay so we're going to level that off a little bit but now we want to come back to where we were and we're probably going to want at this point to sort of come level and again you can lengthen this or you can shorten it however you want i'm probably going to sort of start to you, the other thing is you want to you want your rides to be fairly as smooth as possible you don't want it to be like you know breaking people's necks which in fairness a lot of my rides do do that uh -huh. but people as well a good way to create kind of good excitement and so on is to create a lot of rises and falls okay so that's basically coming in and around now next thing what are we going to do we're going to come back around on ourselves right here so i'm going to rotate this like so maybe extend it out a little bit and there's different uh selected pieces that you can put in as well but you don't always need to go crazy with that and i think this needs to go a little bit longer because we want to make this nice and smooth as we come around the corner depending on how you want your rides to be as well you can make it real tight lots of turns and corners and stuff like this or you can make it a little bit calmer like this one is that i've got going on and i'm, I'm making this like a nice big corner right here okay now let's come back we start to kind of level it off a little bit as we go and reduce that distance Level that off a little bit more. Level that off completely and drop it down again. And let's see what we can do here with inversions and whatnot. There's some big things there. Look, now, look that looks amazing, but we're not going to have enough speed. There's no way we're going to have enough speed. Overbank turn, though. It's possible we might have enough speed, but it's, we've come quite away from that drop initially, so maybe not. We probably want to put that in first if we were going to have it at all. Loops, though. It's possible we could get a loop in, maybe. There's a little inclined loop, which takes us actually up. Or we can have it so that we come through there and look switch over. But that turn there could be a little bit severe. However, you can also do this. You can adjust... These things are always a little bit laggy, but basically that enables you to adjust the, the size and the space of these. Of course, you could just go for the standard vertical loop. I'd be curious to see whether we actually have enough speed and momentum to actually get up there. 
But I'm going to say like let's let's try that. Now the other thing you can do, you can start a test whilst you're building, which can be helpful sometimes because you don't want to get to the end of your very very like complicated build and then discover hey actually the ride doesn't work at all. So here we go, off the ride goes. And you can also keep an eye here on your speed and g-forces and stuff and make sure that it's not too extreme. See, when they went up over that little run right there, see, I, we've got nowhere near it. There's going to be nowhere near, near enough speed to get up this, I don't think. Yeah, there you go. See, as I thought, there's a good rule of thumb here, which is depending on which kind of height you have, if your loop or your kind of uh, incline or whatever is higher than where you were kind of starting off, you're not going to have enough momentum to kind of get through that. So that's not a big surprise for me, but it is a good illustration of like the limitations. But you see, not every single ride needs to have all these loops and inversions and all this stuff. It's, it's good enough sometimes that your rides can just literally be a track ride with lots of little ups and downs. That can be exciting enough for people. They don't always need to have those kind of really full on things. And depending on the kind of coaster that you're building as well, you might be able to, for example, get like a speed boost midway through your ride that will push the ride up. Depending on the types of coaster, different coasters have different functionality. They have different kind of attributes. Yeah, actually having a little cutback here would probably be better. But I want to make this a bit bigger. Let's try that. Then we can pull this back, drop it down a little bit. And then we're probably going to want to start sort of thinking about heading back to the start now. Okay, now another thing you can do once you've kind of got your ride vaguely how you want it to and you're near to the end, you can use the autocomplete function if you want. And you can see that will just take us back. However, sometimes it's not really always the best way to go. So for example, we can do friction brakes, which will just slow the train down at this point. So we can just put a couple of friction brakes in. And then we might want to sort of build on. Now another thing we can do is put a block section in. Now a block section is basically a way for us to add another train cart onto the ride, which can be really worthwhile doing. Um, so then we'll just have this. Now, one thing we're going to need to do, though, is we're going to need to have these drive tires push the train along. Now, I'm also going to have to make sure that this is about the same width or the uh, same line to get back to the station. And luckily for us, I yeah, see there's a little bit of a drop down here. So I'm going to put these on drive tires as well and then that has to be just an ordinary piece of track but that's fine okay so i think i basically have got this ride finished i did a vague little test midway through but it looks okay so let's do a little test of the ride and see how it works And we can see like all of our test ratings here, keep an eye on G-Force, make sure it's actually tolerable for people to ride the ride. But that took me all of like five, 10 minutes. It's very, very straightforward to build these rides. And uh, obviously it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of knowing of all the different features and elements and kind of what you can do and the momentums and all this kind of stuff. And I'm no expert ride builder by far, but you know, once you get your head around it, it's not too difficult. And this one's a bit rough. I need to smooth it off a bit. But it's like the bare bones of a reasonable ride. Just smooth some of these corners and edges off, especially that starting. It was very wobbly there. And often it's surprising. People don't need your rides to be too extreme to find them quite exciting. I say some of these corners and edges are a little bit severe. They're not quite as smooth as they could be, but you can go back and adjust that and mend that, make it smoother for yourself. I haven't actually tested through here, and I'm a bit concerned that maybe we... Oh, no, we just have got enough momentum, look. we got some brakes and our drive tyres that will push us back around to the start. So there you go. Quite a straightforward little ride. We'll see what kind of ratings we got.
Okay, good. 3.8 excitement, 2.4 fear, and only 0.6 nausea. So that's very good. Um, we look at our G-forces as well. Max lateral Gs is only 4.7. Max vertical, 3.7. So G-forces is good as well. So yeah, there you go. Very straightforward little ride. In fact, I actually like that ride so much that I kind of want to save it for myself, maybe work on it a little bit more later. Okay, so what we would do is if we want to save this ride, click done. Okay, so that's our ride right there, look. There you go. And that's actually not a bad little coaster. I quite like that one. Uh, so I want to save that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click here, save as blueprint. Okay, new blueprint. And uh, let's have this one. We'll call it the guide, seeing as it was for my guide. And item, you have to write description and put still in dev. Okay, and you can add tags to it, etc. if you want to find it more easily. Uh, you can pause, you can take like however kind of cinematic an image you want of your ride that just allows you to remember. That's not a bad little image right there. Create blueprint and done. Okay, and that's it. That's how you build a ride and click on that, delete it. Um, and then now if I go to my blueprints and I go back to the filters and I go back to source and I go back to my creations and then we'll see that ride that we just built. There it is, the guide. And I can click this and I can bring it back in. And again now, depending on how I wanted to position this in the park, okay, we could put it we could put it all underground. If we wanted, we could put loads of it underground, we could put it above ground, whatever you want. You get the idea. Okay, so that's this park, and that gives you the basic overview of the game and all the different things that you can do, or the mechanics, or the elements. Let's just have a look at one other park before we finish. Okay, now here we are at one of my other parks. Now this is a park that we were working on the live stream for quite some time. But it basically got to a point where I kind of decided like, yeah, you know, we'd kind of done enough with this park. And uh, I felt like everything was going well and it was all in the right direction. So this park was when the Adventure Park DLC or the Adventure Pack DLC came out. And I wanted to test out a load of the new features. And they are awesome. It's probably one of my favorite DLC packs for the game, actually. And it gives you a lot of kind of random adventure stuff like this. As you come into the park right here, you'll see this is like my crocodile lake, which is pretty cool. Health and safety is out the window. Um, actually, things get worse when it comes to health and safety in this park because where is it? Where's my... Uh, oh yeah, it's, it's right here, I think. Oh, no, no, no. That's the beginning. Where do we go? Over here. Over here. Yeah, the old... Uh, the old health and safety spikes. Uh, keep your children. Watch out for the children on that one. There's also this guy coming up out of the sand, which is kind of cool. But yeah, there's loads of like cool little features and stuff with the with this DLC pack that I really, really enjoyed. But anyway, so you can see right here that it's. I decided to start off the park with this kind of Aztec jungle theme. Um, but the issue with this park, the reason why I stopped is, is just performance, really. It got to a point where I'd placed so many objects and so many different things that you can feel the difference between this park and the previous one. It's just getting a little bit laggy around the edges, and it, gets, it just gets a little bit too much. It doesn't help that, you remember what I said before about parks, um, paths and stuff? Also, look at, look at the level of vandalization here. There's so many people that are so aggravated here in this area that they have just been, like, vandalizing the hell out of these benches and uh, bins and all this stuff. So you can kind of just like click on these and uh, replace them when they've been vandalized. But if you're having a lot of vandalization, for example, you might want to ask yourself, why? Why am I having a lot of vandalization in my park? Well, it's probably because people are literally raging and uh, this would be quite a good example of why they might be raging. Because just this shit, this is, like, this is like a zombie apocalypse of the theme park right here. Just too many people, too many people. Too much is too much. Just anarchy in the UK. I wouldn't want to be in the middle of this lot, seriously. This is this is like a pickpocket's dream right here. Pickpocket's dream. But anyway, this is just like a big, big problem with it. But you can see my my paths are actually kind of massive. I think the, the reason was was that there wasn't a lot of places for people to buy food. And then I put some food stores here. And also there's like a little pathway that goes through this way. And I don't know why. Also, this ride here, this ride has just been endlessly 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 popular and so the whole things have come together to create like a perfect storm of patronage so it's not like the best thing really uh, then you can see over here we've got like this is my kind of quite cool lava ride okay i think this is actually like a pre-built ride i didn't build this one i think this is one of the games rides actually um but I did uh, decor and style this one together with all the lava and all these little bits and pieces which i think was quite cool and it kind of um 
air built the sort of walkway down here going through the lava pits etc etc so I was quite happy with that it all sort of sits in there quite well uh, another really big feature of this park was the, uh, the log flume ride there's the log flume ride in this park it goes through this kind of like crocodile safari uh, and it takes you through here through these kind of like swamps loads of crocodiles crocodiles and then you come up here go around the mountain there's like one drop, I think, and takes you up. And then uh, you come up around the top here, look where these guys are going. It's quite nice as well, because you kind of have like a good overview of the whole park. And then they come down here, and there's like a, a lagoon look with more crocodiles. So yeah, quite, quite a good ride. Got a waterfall in here as well. And I was quite pleased that with the waterfall, like... There's like a, a walkway through here so people can kind of like look through and see parts of the ride. I mean, you just get to customize so much in this game, it's absolutely mental. And you can see this ride is ridiculously popular. People are just waiting to go on this ride. They love it. You can't get enough of it. And I don't know why I'm charging for this ride, but it's probably not enough. And it's four stars and I'm charging, yeah, I'm charging the right amount, so $20. But this ride, basically from being built to now, has just been continually and permanently popular. So a load of other rides. This is a cool little kind of like pathway as well. It comes through here. Bit of a crashed plane. Some beetles all over the path. Giant scorpions, as you do. Just giants. Watch out, people. Again. <laughs> My parks tend to sort of throw health and safety to the wind. Uh, this was quite a cool thing, again, with the kind of adventure theme going on here. We've got some archaeologists here who are just kind of digging out. And there's a bit of some artifacts and kind of like, you know, architectural work. I think this ride is just broken down. Like, see, when a ride breaks down, they just boot everybody out. Uh, and then we come down through here. So this is where we have our minecart ride, but we also have um, this great big piston sort of thrill ride. So the two things, and this is kind of like iron themed, so I decided to build like kind of like uh, sort of I again if you wanted to you could put some you know the name of the ride on there on the front of this now this here is the minecart ride which I, I think ended up being uh, when with the with the guys in the stream the minecart ride ended up being like one of the most popular uh, so we'll maybe just get in here and have a little look see oh, the old American Eagle this was gonna be like Wild West land but it was kind of like the finishing edge of the park so we kind of ended up uh, losing it a little bit okay so we come in through here so this is the kind of mine area of the park. So you see, I built all of this down in through here. This is all dug out. They're waiting for the next train to come. Hey, here it comes, look. This is quite cool, quite cinematic through here, look. Okay, so here we go on the minecart ride. Now again, this is one... I didn't maybe spend enough time on some of the details at this side of it. But again, it's my concern of trying to maintain the performance of the park.
There you go. Alright. That is the minecart ride. I was very happy with it. I think this is one of the better rides that we've made. It still had a lot of work to do, unfortunately, and I, I, we didn't really kind of get around to sorting it out, but um, I was very happy with this ride. There was loads of things that I wanted to improve with this ride in terms of kind of like um, just kind of getting more detail in, getting different parts of the ride. But obviously, one really cool part of it is this part back here. So this was like, I decided, <laughs> the guys decided uh, when we were live on the stream a while back that one thing we wanted to do is create this huge, huge crater in the ground and like basically put this building of a ride into it Now the problem with this and i i still never really got to the root of the cause was that for some reason in this park and i i still have never really like i say got to the bottom of what the issue was but you could see over there the massive massive amount of people who are stuck in that one area but for some reason when you came over to this part of the park this area of the park numbers of people really kind of dwindled you can see uh, in the past this ride has been very popular some of it's going to be down to kind of like age of rides and stuff like this but essentially this half of my park really very much struggled to get people in and i think part of it was having too many rides too close in one area of the park and therefore people found it easy to kind of just stay in one area and spend their money and not spread themselves around the park and that's why the uh, the first park that we were work we were looking at today it was my way of uh, that that build that i'm working on is a way of kind of just trying to test and see like okay you know how can you ensure that all areas of your park um you know work and they don't become kind of like too empty it depends a little bit on the kind of ride itself like i say this log flume ride you, you just you're always going to get people going on those so you know it's an interesting thing but you kind of learn it as you go and this this one over here was an interesting one i still like i say even now i can't fully get to the bottom of what it is that makes less people go although i think part of it is going to be to do with age of rides i mean this ride right here is reviving i think i think the reason why some of these are quiet over here is because they're reviving rides and so on because this ride when i first put it in was rammed this queue was absolutely full so it does depend a little bit on the age of the rides i think we'll ride just one more here and then we'll finish for the day So this ride is the uh, water roller coaster. This is the ride that I was waiting to lay in on uh, the existing park that we were looking at first, but I hadn't researched it yet. But this is a great ride. It's, it's a newer ride that came again in one of the updates with the game. I don't think I have any music on this ride, and it would be really good to add some music. Oh, like, see, so going through the... Yeah, I think this ride really needs music. This one didn't have any originally, and it obviously doesn't now. It would be good to add some in here. It's basically a water roller coaster, this one. You can see you can get all these kind of animatronics, different snakes and creatures. So I had this idea with this ride that it was kind of like a kind of jungle river experience. And so you kind of go underground here, going through like some big cave systems, big snake. And you kind of design all of the terrain and put in these creeping vines and different plants, etc, etc, as you go through. I'll just speed us through this bit because it's a little bit quiet. It's basically just kind of like a sort of a jungle adventure in these big boats here. But uh, I really enjoyed the layout of this ride. I don't know if I actually saved this one out, but I would do because I would use it in the future. But a huge part of this ride is the, the, the rocks and the terrain deformation. That's what makes this ride work. A little splash. Get up to the top here. But some of the rides, basically, some of these rides like this one... It's not a roller coaster, so it doesn't kind of just keep going once it's started. There's a lot of chain lifts in this one because it's like it's basically taking you through sections of the ride rather than just being a non stop thing. Uh, we're looping around this central section again. And then it kind of brings us back towards the beginning just as we go through here. And then that's basically it lifts us out of the water and i also i wanted to get like a bit of a safari style sort of theme going with this one so again you can put different animatronics in you saw the crocodiles earlier we also have animatronic hippos and different animals that you can have i feel like that's a, I, I feel like they should have done like a, a safari dlc with this game where they had like a huge variety of different animatronic animals and that would have kind of given them a, a way of kind of uh, circumventing the fact that there wasn't the safari thing in the game anyways so this is planet coaster it's a supremely good game, and I hope that's been a kind of... It's quite a long overview and tutorial, but it's kind of necessary to give it 
that much time to really get you to understand what it is with this game that you can do um you know it's really about the limit is only your kind of imagination you can do just about whatever you want with this game you can build rides however you want to you can build the scenery however you want to you can design the park however you want to you can theme it you can experiment with different things all sorts of stuff that you can have going on you should check out the steam workshop so many things that people have built on there are absolutely amazing and um it's true what i said though that there are limitations uh, in terms of just how many objects you can place with those items but it's a very exciting because you know the fact that they're going to enable people to build in uh, 3d elements that people have made for themselves in like 3d editing software and then actually implement those into the game that's pretty exciting because that really uh, gives the possibility of giving this game like a whole new lease of life so it's going to be pretty exciting to see what happens there but anyway that's my kind of overview and guide to planet coaster i hope that has been enjoyable for you if you enjoy and you have any questions please drop them in the comments below thanks for watching as always and if you enjoyed drop a like always helps me out helps the channel i'll see you next time guys for a look at maybe some more indie games or other things just some unusual one-offs like I say, this isn't going to be a consistent thing all the time with the channel, but I want to drop these in now and again because I think it's cool and I enjoy them. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.